Christmas is with us again. It comes round every year and you know it marks our passage through the voyage of our lives, doesn't it? I'm sitting here in the lounge of my little cottage in the New Forest, not far from the West Solent. The wind's howling outside and it's not a nice day at all, but I've got my fire burning and I've got my glass of sherry and I'm thinking about Christmas's past really. I'm thinking about three particular ones. That, that, that stick in my mind, and they're very, very different. The first one started, when was it? Goodness me, back in the 1970s, mid-1970s. Ros and I were bound south for Rio on our little gaff cutter, the little Colin Archer boat, Sari, the, the Norwegian pilot cutter built by the great man himself in 1903. And we'd had a rough passage. It was, it was winter time in the Northern Hemisphere and we'd had a hammering from the Northeast Trades, which we were taking on the beam as we went down towards Cabo San Rock on the corner of South America. And for a while it looked as if we were going to struggle to weather Cape San Rock because the easterlies were driving us down, the equatorial current was carrying us down towards the Caribbean and we were, we were close hauled, taking a beating. And as we went round the Cape we were, expecting, we were expecting to hit doldrums as we passed between the northeast and the southeast trades. And really the wind never stopped, it kept on blowing. Um, but we had some very strange weather. The, uh, the, the, the great squalls came down on us and there were odd patches of calm, but mostly it kept on blowing. And the wind veered slowly round towards the southeast. It got worse and worse as we were being pushed in onto the South American coast. But we pressed on and then one morning as we were just rounding the Cape, we could almost see it. It was, in fact, we could see the lights of Recife, uh, the loom of Recife in the clouds. We were that close. And the wind began to come round, and it came round into the northeast as we got onto the, the western leg of the South Atlantic High. And it carried us down, and as the wind came round further and further, it came right round onto the quarter and then we had the most glorious sail down to Salvador and we were rushing on because we really wanted to get in for Christmas and in the end I remember on Christmas Eve we were just hammering down there going like a train big blue seas transparent coming up behind us lifting the boat and she was surging on towards her destination and you know the seas were so clear that we could see the big Dorado following our lure as we, as we roared along, surging down towards Christmas. And, and we arrived in Salvador on Christmas Eve, just before dark. Got our anchor down off the Mercado Modelo, which in those days was a place where all the working vessels of, of the great Bay of All Saints, the Bahia de Todos os Santos, where they all gathered uh, to, 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 to put their produce ashore. And because it was Christmas, they were all in there. And there was an almighty party going on. There was wonderful, wonderful samba music coming out of this great echoing building. Dunka, dunka. Wonderful. And there were two other yachts in there. There was a, a British yacht, uh, uh, which was crewed by a milkman from Birmingham and his very talented and beautiful wife and that was a West Solent One design, a most unlikely vessel to be cruising the seas but there she was um, and they came over and wished us Merry Christmas and away on the other side over towards the working vessels was a slightly larger boat, a catch manned by four young Swedes and they were having a whale of a time. There was girls all over the deck and they were drinking rum and they beckoned us over and we all joined in the party and we had a wonderful Christmas. But the interesting thing was that on Christmas morning um, full of the joys of spring and, 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 uh, and the general feeling of, uh, of love for all mankind, I wandered down to the beach just, just as it was coming light uh, and, and there were some guys sitting there on the beach just looking at the sea and in front of them they had a jam jar with a candle burning in it and they were the Macumbistas, they, they were the voodoo men and that was another world altogether um, quite how they fitted into the Christmas scene, I never found out, but it was a powerful thing to see these men just sitting there very quietly looking out to sea for who knows what with their candles burning. Yeah, so that was one Christmas. Later on the same voyage, uh, we spent some time in South America uh, and we ended up coming home via the West Indies, uh, the Caribbean, and, and we were in Grenada. 
And a question arose as to what we were going to do for Christmas. In those days, there weren't so many cruising yachts as there are, nothing like as many, but there were probably a dozen of us so, in, a dozen of us or so in, 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 in the main anchorage at Grenada. And Don Street was there with his, with, with his old boat and uh, one or two other characters that you might have known about. But there were a couple of South African boys who'd sailed up from, uh, sailed up from the Cape, and they said, let's have a braai, let's have a barbecue for Christmas. And uh, we'll all go around to Hog Island. That's a, a little tiny anchorage on the south coast. There were no marks for it then, and you had to work your way in through the reefs. And they said, um, we'll get a couple of sucking pigs, and we'll have a proper barbecue. We'll have a good time. Everybody can come. And so we all went, and all the boats crowded in there. We all anchored in there, and there's no sign of the pigs. So... Um, well, the South African lads were, were on the beach, and there was a place where you could walk up, uh, you could walk ashore to the, the mainland. And uh, we were all hanging around there for some reason. And, and suddenly, over the hill came this guy, and he's got he's got two pigs on a lead. The pigs arrived on the hoof. So the question then arises as to who was going to do the dreadful deed. Well, of course. I've got to say that most of the Europeans were a bit uh, squeamish about this, but not the South Africans. They knew what to do, so they took them behind a bush, and uh, that was that, I'm afraid. It was, a, it was a brutal business, but my word, it made for a great Christmas barbecue, and um, those little pigs came to a good end, because uh, what they had to offer went into us and made us stronger and uh, allowed us to celebrate something really special. And uh, we all had palm fronds at our mastheads because we couldn't have Christmas trees. I'm a great believer in having a Christmas tree at a masthead uh, when you're celebrating Christmas. But uh, that year we had palm trees. But we had a grand time on the beach with the boys and we sang songs, we sang carols. I had a guitar and I could do that. And, uh, and that was that one. And the last one I want to talk about was Nearer to Home. Roz always makes a Christmas card to send around to our friends and shipmates and, uh, and this one, uh, which I'll put up on the screen now so you can have a look at it, this was a bit of sp a special one. What you're looking at is the saloon on Western Man, the boat which we had in the, in, in the 90s. And, uh, we built her, or had her built for us, and she had the most beautiful saloon. And we'd often spend Christmas on board in Bewley, at, uh, at the marina at Bewley. We'd bring her in. Well, not really at the marina, at the bottom of the village street. There's a bit of a berth there. And it was lovely, absolutely lovely. And one winter, everyone had gone to bed, and I was just sitting there by myself. And uh, a few thoughts came to me. And uh, the bogey stove was burning, the lamps were turned down, and I was just thinking about Christmas and what it really means, actually. And... Uh, this is what I thought. I'm going to have to put my glasses on, so I will. I wrote these words that night and put them on the Christmas card. Midnight, the bottom of the tide, all hands turned in and not a breath of wind. A clink in the grate as a log burns through on the stove. A whisper from a slow burning lamp. A crack from a frozen stern line stretched by the young flood. The river waits, spellbound in starlight for high water, for Christmas morning, and God with us. Cheers. <laughs>